Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Finally, we make it to the representation theory of symmetric groups. There will be a part one, a part two, and a part three. And probably if I would like to, I could go to part 112 because representation theory of symmetric groups is really cool. And there are a lot of things you can say, but of course, at one point, I just need to cut it. So today's topic basically is how can we nicely index the simple representation of the symmetric group? And the answer, and a not trivial answer, which came up about at the beginning of the 20th century uh, by Young and basically by Frobenius also, uh, so about 120 years ago, is what is now known as Young diagrams. Um, we'll see what that is. Okay, let's get started. So keep in mind what we want to do is we want to index a simple representation of symmetric groups. But first, let us motivate the story a little bit. So um, SN, of course, is a permutation group. Uh, the symmetry group if you want it to in geometric pictures, it's a symmetry group of a simplex. The only confusing point, point here is always that you have an off by run error. So SN is a symmetry group of the N minus one simplex. Let me double check whether I got that correct. So S4 should be the symmetry group of the tetrahedron as illustrated here. And let me just call the tetrahedron the three simplex. Um, anyway, um, that might be wrong actually. Anyway, that has a relation, a very close relation up to some off by one errors from symmetric groups to simplices and they're the permutation groups. So basically they permute the, vertic uh, the, the vertices of those simplices. Uh, yeah, it's a permutation group. It's arguably the most important group. Maybe the finite and building groups are more important, but it's a, certainly the, well, still arguably the most important non-abelian group. And well, they appear everywhere. So their representations appear everywhere. So you should make some, by the way, some people, including myself, I probably shouldn't say that on video, but anyway, some people would say combinatorics is nothing else than a special case of representation theory of the symmetric group. And that's of course, just not, just, just not true, but it's, anyway, anyway. So the representations of the symmetric group appear anywhere, everywhere in mathematics. And yeah, I mean, this is important, right? So it's kind of clear why this should be important, uh, but we don't really, up to this point, don't really understand them very well. Um, obviously, up to this point, we don't understand them really well. I mean, in this series of, of videos, the representation theory of the symmetric group uh, in over the complex numbers is well understood since Frobenius. So Frobenius basically already worked that out, as I said, 120-ish years ago. But we as uh, viewers uh, and also the speaker of these videos, we don't understand them very well. So we might look, want to look for some combinatorial description preferably of the representation theory. Uh, why combinatorially? Well, combinatorics is always good. And for the symmetric group, there should be some hope because it's a group of combinatorics, basically. So that's what we want to do. So we want to describe the representation theory of the symmetric group by some combinatorial means, whatever that means, right? So it's a little bit defined. And we'll just, well, get started and see how far we can go. Turns out, uh, spoiler, spoiler, what a surprise. Um, well, I mean, actually it's, it's surprising in some sense, but anyway, after 120 years, it might not be so surprising anymore. Starting waffling, I'm sorry. So um, oh, this story is really smooth. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, so let's have a look. So the first thing we should do is, well, we know that conjugacy classes and number of simple representations over the complex numbers. So here in this talk, always working over the complex numbers. For the symmetric group, actually this field would be good enough, but let's not worry about the difference anyway. So in uh, over a reasonable field, um, the conjugacy classes of the symmetric group are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the simple representations. So the first task we would like to do is to just label the conjugacy classes in some nice way. And it turns out that this is really simple. So um, two permutations are conjugate, if and only if they have the same cycle type. And what does it mean? Well, cycle type is the following. You put whatever, let's say Sn, and you put uh, eight vertices, so S8, you put eight vertices on a circle. This is supposed to be a circle. This is a horrible circle, of course. And you connect them in some fashion, uh, whatever, something like this. Uh, well, and th that's the cycle type. So it would be here of cycle type. What is this? Five, uh, two, one. This is four, two, one, one. So here's four, two, one. One, one, this is four and four. And this just means, for example, four and four, an example would be one, two, three, four, or four and four, and then five, six, seven, eight. But I'm not telling you, if you look at those pictures, which hopefully make some sense, um, I'm not telling you actually what the vertices are. I'm not saying this is vertex one, 
this corresponds to one, this corresponds to two, or this corresponds to eight, and this corresponds to six or whatever. So I'm just leaving them unlabeled. And the reason is that um, my conjugate, conjugating elements with symmetric group elements is a relabeling operation. So it actually doesn't matter how I relabel how I label my vertices, I get all labelings anyway by conjugating with the correct permutation. So the only thing I'm left with is, well, the size of the circles and how many of them, right? So just the number of those, because I just can move them around freely because there's a relabeling, well, relabeling conjugation operation of the symmetric group. And then I just count the numbers that I see and it's the only thing that matters are the numbers and how often they appear. So four, two, one, one, for example, would be the same as two, one, one, four, and so on, because it's just, again, relabeling operation. So I just remember that I have four, two, one, one, and kind of by construction, they will sum up to eight. And this thing is called a partition of eight. Here the same, it's a partition of eight. And here I would have five plus two plus one, which is a partition of eight. So in other words, partitions of eight are in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, cycle types for S8 on one-to-one correspondence with conjugacy classes for S8 and one-to-one correspondence with simple modules for S8. And not, there was absolutely nothing special about eight. So the general statement is partitions of N and one-to-one correspondence with simple SN representations, which is already a cool statement in itself and the video could stop here. But um, as you can see here, uh, well, as you can see now, I have a desert slide, so the video doesn't stop. So the point is to, to, to well, that's already cool, right? Simple representations are one-to-one -one indexed by partitions and partitions are well, very well known and studied throughout number theory, were well known at Fabrinius' time for hundreds of years. Maybe I shouldn't say hundreds of years, but they were certainly known for a long time. Um, and Fabrinius and Young had the idea to use a slightly different notation for those partitions by just putting those boxes here. So four, two, one, one in the order given by the partition and the partition by convention, let's say, orders uh, big numbers and then smaller numbers and smaller numbers and smaller numbers. So four, four, uh, my five, what was it? Five, whatever example would be this, five to one, I guess, five to one and so on. And this object that you see is a Young diagram. And it turns out that Young diagrams are extremely efficient way to encode partitions. It's this arrangement of little blocks and then you want to do some nice combinatorics with those little blocks and that really works in the end. But for now, we just get the following result just in huge quotation marks. It's actually a cool theorem. That the simple representations of SN, again, over some nice field and one-to-one -one correspondence with Young diagrams with a corresponding number of boxes. So S0, which is a little bit of a boring group, uh, corresponds to no diagram, we can ignore that, but anyway, S0 corresponds to no diagram. S1 is one box, and how many ways do I have to put one box? Well, there's one, I guess. S2 has two boxes, and there are two ways to put those two boxes, which would be either two or one plus one in, uh, in perm uh, permutation, in a partition notation. Uh, so for S3, I get those guys, and so on. For S4, I get four way, uh, five ways, sorry, to uh, list to my partitions here in terms of Young diagrams. For S5, I get uh, whatever, I forgot, it's not so hard, uh, many ways so to do it, and so on and so on. And that's pretty cool statement, actually. So the simple representations are one-to-one -to -one correspondence with those nice arrangements um, in the play. Um, okay, we might say then, okay, that falls a little bit out of the blue. Why are those nice arrangements actually really nice? So do, do, do they tell us anything uh, beyond just some parameterizing set? And they do, but I can only sketch it right now in this video. So you can, for example, encode the dimensions of the simple representations for those partitions. So for each one of those Young diagrams, there is a simple representation and you can encode them nicely, the dimensions nicely in the, tablo in the Young diagrams itself by what is called a young tableau. Um, so here, for example, this is the case of S3. So you have three boxes. Here in my character table, we see the dimensions, which is one, one, two. Um, and the way to encode it is as follows. You fill your diagram with numbers from one to three, non-repeating, just numbers from one to three, such that each row and each column increases. So one, two, three is the only possible filling here 
because if I would put one, three, two, for example, it's not increasing anymore. Similarly here, one, two, three is the only filling because I would put whatever three, one, two, it's not increasing, right? So those are known examples. And the only possible filling with those numbers are those, and you just count the number of those fillings and that's the dimension of your representation. So dimension one. Here you have two ways because you can, well, change those two numbers. So you count two. Yeah, so that's, uh, for example, a nice way to read off the dimension. There's also a way to read off the character and so on and so on and actions by nice elements. It's a really powerful language uh, of those standard young tableau, of those young diagrams. Okay, all I was telling you today is I gave you a hint what you can do in the representation theory of symmetric groups. And well, I also stated a theorem which kind of says how many, a very nice indexing theorem for the simple representations of SN given by young diagrams. Um, I kind of kind of also try to sketch that you can play a lot of games with the young diagrams to encode more information about the representation. And we are going to continue uh, playing those games in well, the next few videos. And it's really huge story. So young diagrams and representations of the symmetric group are really, really deeply connected, which is not, it's really not obvious if you just see the definition of a young diagram. I mean, why should that be related at all? Well, it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you next time.